Welcome, welcome back, everybody, to the Arizona Real Estate News Show with Jackie and Ruby with Century 21 Arizona Foothills. And Pat, what's my rate, McMasters? Hi, Pat. Hey, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> recognize <laughs> Ruby. We're, yeah, hi. We're, oh, we're, the wrong we're, way. Am hi. I? We yeah, practice no, every not. week. We'll get good at it. Then when you get <laughs> good at it, I'm going to move you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> oh, the confusion. I know. I know. It gets fun. So, Pat, <laughs> you are the man of the hour. I'm going to tee this up for you in that, uh, um, you know, Thursday, we had anticipation of the uh, consumer price index numbers coming out today. And you said last week that you felt that the volatility in the rates are, has really tamped down and that they're, that they're gone, that it used to be any bit of news would make things spike. And I also saw a couple of YouTube videos that were projecting that today was going to be a very wild day in the bond market. And uh, uh, it doesn't look like that happened. No, I mean, it's uh, pretty much, I mean, the CPI numbers came out pretty much as expected. I mean, uh, we saw here today that uh, five and a half coupons up 22 basis points and 10-year treasuries down 10 basis points. So, I mean, the CPI came in at you know, minus 0 0.01, which is actually for the month of December. And so there, um, it's been, a, it was a good, good print, basically. I mean, uh, things like, like I said, the bonds are acting very, uh, in a good way today. I mean, you see right here, we're seeing this consolidation kind of with rates, these are this is the price of bonds, but the last uh, since January sixth, the last uh, what, you know, uh, since last week, we've seen an improvement. Now the low was one hundred and eighteen, and now we're sitting at uh, one hundred one sixty four. So we've seen about a about a point increase in price, which has been really strong. Um, you know that it just seems like as though things have kind of stabilized, you know, the news. I mean, we're not getting, like you said, those, like I said last week, we're not getting those wild swings. Um, things seem to be kind of, the cake has already been, been made. You know, we're just waiting at the cool and it's been kind of cooling the last couple, you know, last month and a half or so, which is good. So, so let me ask you when you say that, so what, so the, the bond traders look out about six months. So when the fed says that they're, the anticipation is they're going to go up 25 basis points in February and then 25 again. So that's kind of already anticipated in the bond market. Yeah. Yeah. So when yeah, people I mean, say Rick rates are going to go up like crazy because chairman Powell already said he's going to continue to raise rates. Why aren't they going up? Well, because basically raising rates is going to slow, you know, looking out six to eight months, the market's hopefully going to slow down. So <clears throat> that's what they're looking ahead. So <clears throat> when the news is actually reported, it's it's news that's six, eight months down the road that they're you okay. know throwing in there. So, I mean, that's why everybody's like to look at the daily news. Oh, it's that's old news. Daily news is always old news based on the market. If that makes sense. So, yeah, it, gotcha. I mean, and they said the next uh, Barry, hit, you know, like I said, the bond market's been tra trading very attractively today. Um you know, basically everything on inflation front seems to have actually it, it, it seems as though things are kind of reversing course a little bit on the inflation front based on what Barry has said or have been with mortgage, you know, MBS Highway. Uh, the next step will be the PCE, the personal consumption expenditures that's coming out the 27th. So that's another, you know, uh, two, you know, almost two weeks away. But they said the actual run rate, if you average it out based on the December's inflation news, the average inflation rate right now is about, believe it or not, like 1.6. If you were to average that over 12 months of what happened this in December. So things have started to come down. Um, and like you said, Barry, his son, Barry Habib's son said that the head, you know, the headline inflation rate was sitting at around 9% here at the peak. Now we're at six and a half on the course. Well, and, and it, it came way down in Europe as well. Yeah, inflation yep. rate in Europe was running about fifteen percent, and now it's down to like, I think I read it like nine. Um, yeah, so so still, things seem to be too hot, in my opinion. But uh, it's still hot. But I mean, it's it's going, it's trending the right way. It seems as though you know, um, you know, the burn unit is uh, getting patched up <laughs> in the hospital. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're not, um, I'm not getting burned as much every day. It seemed like there's new fire coming. I mean, the last. Well, 
If you look Speaking at the last six months, months though, like Pat, big... I mean, you know, the, the mortgage news daily is still showing the national average. It's 6.15. It actually went up a little tick today. So, so my yeah. dollar is still taped to the lamp. There are some fives out there, but I'm just going off of that one. Or am I being too stingy? Oh, you're being a little you're being stingy. Too stingy. But, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at uh, 599 with, uh, I mean, that's why, I mean, I've been waiting for today to, to make a move on, you know, locking some people. Because like you said, the last, I mean, if you look at the chart since January 6th, like you said, we've come up nicely the last four or five days. It's right, right, right in here. So that's, <clears throat> it was a good move. So, I mean, you know, sometimes this pricing adjustment can be, you know, two or $3,000, $4,000 in a short period of time in terms of, you know, rate locks. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna concede and uh, hand you the dollar on our Friday live, and uh, and then uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mail Jackie hers. And, uh, <laughs> see, I can, I can hand Pat a dollar because he lives real close, but I don't know how I'm gonna get it to you. Jackie. Oh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Way up in North. We'll Phoenix, do it on so. Friday. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So Hold things on are looking it for me. Things are looking. I mean, things like it just seems as though things have settled down, and like you said. You know, as you said earlier, Rick, I mean, we're not, God, the last, you know, from really June to December, we were just seeing such wild swings. You didn't, I mean, you saw 60, 70, 80 basis points, 90, you know, 100 basis point swings. It was just, it's ridiculous. You know, just, it's very frustrating. Well, we're oh. seeing some numbers too, guys, in in, uh, in the real estate now that says that, I mean, if you were statistically looking at it, you would say that maybe we've already hit the bottom, but. Here's our listing success rate. It's still sitting down there at around 63. It was 63, 62. So it's pretty low compared to up here. But then you look at days of inventory and it's going down. Um, and you look at expireds and we had this huge spike. And that's why, you know, today we have 16,276 homes. On the market, that's it. It's only went up a hundred, and uh -huh. we had three thousand three hundred and seventy-one new listings, but twenty-five ninety-two went under contract. That's about two hundred higher than I projected. That's a difference of seven hundred and seventy-nine, and I think it's in part with all of these expired listings that people tried because there's two kinds of listings out there that, that I heard. And I take this off of uh, one rental at a time. Michael Zuber, he goes, you have wish pricing. And ugly duckling <laughs> listings. And and so the expireds are the ones that said, I'm out. And because nobody's gonna move and get a 50% higher payment. And look at the list pricing. It's not, but it went up a little bit this past week. And uh, hmm. so it, we're seeing, and in my Seven-day moving average, you can see this huge spike. Look at the yellow number, which is under contract. See how it went up? So it went up past the baseline that I would call here, how it was continuing declining. Now it's back up, and new listings are back up. So we're getting new listings, but they're being followed by an increase in sales. So if you were to look at that, you would say, um, statistically, it looks like we're edging closer to a um, saying that this is the bottom. But a lot of moving parts out there still. Well, Rick, and I'm seeing <coughs> just by watching everything, this is not just here. It's nationwide. The expired yeah. spike, the consumer confidence has ticked up. And correct me if I'm wrong, Pat, has that mortgage applications ticked up too? Mm -hmm. A little bit, yeah. So Nothing and, dramatic, and, but I mean, it has, has picked up. Yeah. And so I, I think people are just kind of settled in and that, that fear is settling down. Yeah. yeah, Crawford actually made the comment and said that we're starting to leave uh, the uh, the desperation stage. And I haven't felt that we were ever in the desperation stage yet. To me, that was that would be a lot more um, panic selling, distressed panic selling. And I haven't seen any of that. So I think, you know, I, I don't think we're there yet. We may not get there. Um, I've got some opinions to share on where I think everything is but uh ruby's got some water news for us that uh, she shared earlier in the week what say you ruby <laughs> well what say me is <laughs> um yeah the um 
the news has reported now that the West Valley is 15% uh, um, short of their 100 year uh, supply. So um, what that means is it's not right now. So West Valley um, like building and that type of thing, anything that's permits that have not been approved, um, they're on they're on halt, so to speak. So um, with the the water supply is 15% short for the 100 year um, supply demand. So we're not desperate for water now, but in the future, they don't see that projection there. So especially with the droughts and that, that we've been fighting. Yeah, and the Arizona Department of Water Resources, the A AWDR, it's called, um, mm -hmm. ADWR, they, their job is to manage the groundwater and um, our water from the Colorado all that, although that's managed by um, not the not that same agency, but but by the state. And so um, we're seeing a lot more rural areas now that want to sign on to that agency so they can get help. Places like Waddell, um, mm -hmm. Bisbee, um, areas like Sierra Vista, because their groundwater is not regulated. And some of them are starting to have problems with their wells. So They've done an excellent job. And I got a video coming out Sunday night that's going to show you what that agency has actually accomplished since it was established in 1980. But now they're doing a good job of saying, and what I like about this is, it was the governor said this report's been out there for a while, but uh -huh. it wasn't shared. Right. Yeah. So, since before the elections in November. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she said, there's no reason for that not to be made public. Well, Let's get it out in front of everybody. Yeah. I mean, we know why it wasn't public, and that's because of all the building that's going on out there. So if, if there are people are going, I mean, there's huge projects, 50-year planned projects out between Buckeye and Tonopah that are planned. I think mm -hmm. it's Bill Gates, and who's the other large one? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I, I can't remember the name, but, you know, know, look at No, I can't remember. I'll remember as soon as we're done. But, you know, you look at Buckeye has suffered the most as far as it, on the Crawford report. So, you know, they've been building like crazy. They have an abundance of homes and it's going to have an effect eventually on value out there because what's going to, you know, if you've got a commodity that you can't build anymore because they, the, the builders to get their permits, they have to be able to show that hundred year water supply. And out there, I believe it's more groundwater than Colorado, correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. well groundwater is 50% of our resources. No, 43% of our water comes, comes from the ground. Okay. Um, I thought no, Buckeye was higher. Uh, it could be, could be. And here's what you were talking about too, just on the uh, Cromford index there that, uh, oops, um, somehow I made that disappear. There we go. Um, they're down in the fifties. Mm -hmm. That's all well, driven by a, new construction. Yeah. New construction, abundance of homes and I, you know, it's going to take some time, but if new permits start getting limited, it's going to add value to the homes out there that exist. So it'll be interesting to watch and it'll be interesting to watch you know, what's going to happen with these big projects. Yeah. And I think the same thing happened to the uh, Prescott area a few years ago where they put a limit on new builds because of water. Yeah. And uh, it's not cheap to buy anything in Prescott. No. No. So what are you saying? If I'm 58 and I lived 158, I should be worried. <laughs> 108. Well, maybe. well, you'll you'll have to drink 15 percent less water, Pat. Um, yeah. I lived 158. I'm going to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't, I yeah. don't think you know if you live to 158. I don't think hydration is going to be your issue. It's not going to be my <laughs> problem. It's not going to be a problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Now I'm looking ahead. So now. I got to speaking of age, I got to tell you a funny story of my son here. And then, then I want to talk about chat GPT for a moment, which is yeah. the latest rage out there and realtors are using like crazy. So everything you read in real estate's written by a robot from now on. And, uh, but my son was telling me he works at Best Buy and people come in and he gets these people that come in and they go, well, I can't learn technology because I'm, I'm just too old. I'm in my fifties. That's and that me. just sets him off. And he told me on the phone that he goes, so anyway, I told this guy, he goes, my dad's in his seventies. And I said, Whoa, stop right there. 
I'm only 68. Don't put me over the hump yet. He goes, he learned open base software. He goes, well, for just for the illustration of the story, dad, I told her you were in your seventies. I said, no, I honestly believe you think that. <laughs> but, well, you look great for 68. You look great. Yeah. <laughs> for 70. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. But anyway, let's this chat GPT. Here's what it is. You can type in and you ask it a question and it'll answer it for you. So, for example, you can say, like, Jackie, didn't you just use it to write a listing description? Because I'm terrible. I sure did. I sure did. And I'm really particular about my listing descriptions. Sometimes I'll sit there and spend an hour or two because I think it's really super important. That's your opportunity between that and the photos to capture a buyer's attention. So that description, I hate when I see somebody put three bedroom, two baths, split bedroom, floor plan, vaulted ceilings. And that's their listing description. Mm -hmm. So anyways, long story short, I've, I used it for our land. So we just listed uh, just under four acres out in Tonopah. And Ruby knows, like, I get a little elaborate with my words. And it seems like the more I use it now, it's starting to generate more type of how I would talk. It's like it's getting to know me. It's weird. Mm. And so I put in there the bullet points, and it gave me a wonderful listing description. And if you don't like it, you just hit the button. It gives you another one. Hit the right. button. It gives you another one. It's I've written emails off it. Um, it's fabulous. It, it writes code, too. So if you wanted to code a website and you wanted to create your own QR code, it writes it for you. So I experimented mm -hmm. around with it a little bit. And and I and I used Pat as an example. I and can't so wait to see this. I, I wanted to. So here's what I put in. I put in the question that said, um, dear, um, I said, write a polite email to Pat letting him know He's too ruggedly handsome and can no longer be a guest on our YouTube show called Arizona Real Estate News. <laughs> now, in less than 30 seconds, we got a reply. So I'm going to tee this up and I'm going to read this formal email to you, Pat, letting you know that you okay. can no longer be a guest on this show. And, uh, um, and I, I think it's only appropriate that we have some background music. And it says... Dear Pat, I hope this email finds you well. I am writing to let you know that we have greatly appreciated your participation as a guest on our YouTube show, Arizona Real Estate News. Your expertise and insights have been invaluable to our viewers. However, we have received feedback that your ruggedly handsome appearance is causing a distraction to our audience and taking away from the content of the show. We understand this is something that's beyond your control, and we want to assure you that this decision is not reflected of your contributions to the show. We would like to continue to have you as a guest on our show in the future, but in a different capacity. We'd like to explore other ways in which you can contribute your expertise and insights to our viewers, whether through written articles, social media posts, or other means. Please let us know if this is something you would be interested in so we can discuss further. Thank you for understanding and for your contributions to Arizona Real Estate. <laughs> now, the wow. robot wrote this. I love it. Now, I'm not... So I got I can add something to it right now while we're live and say say something about his hair. Okay, now because it'll add to this. Okay. So it probably gonna say something very nice about your hair. Now watch how it types here. Additionally. We would like to mention that your hair also adds to your ruggedly handsome appearance. <laughs> <laughs> and it may be beneficial to consider a different hairstyle for future appearances of our show. Of course, this is completely up to you and your personal preferences. We want to ensure that the focus remains on the valuable content. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Classic. That's scary. Wow. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> now, you, on a serious note, you can, if you want to type an email to somebody and you're just not sure how to craft it, you can say, hey, wow. I want to type an email about the following, to the following person on this subject, and it'll spit it out. 
Wow. And oh my God. you can, people are putting there like real estate agents putting in, type me a YouTube script about a certain topic. So I hope all the YouTubers don't start getting robotic out there and just reading off the of teleprompters. But this is just the beginning. And what it doesn't do, it's not, they're saying, oh, it's going to replace Google. It doesn't crawl around the web. So if you were to ask it something before 2021 and say like, um, uh, how were- You mean after 2021? After 2021, yeah. So yeah. you can't you can't let it um, look on the internet for information. It doesn't do that. It's a language learning AI bot. So everything mm -hmm. you ask, so that conversation we just had there, I can continue that. I can say, well, mm -hmm. uh, how about his clothes? You know, and it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I, you know, so it really cool. is time saving, though. I, I mean, even for I've used it for emails because Ruby will tell you I'm the worst. It's I, I use the wrong words. My punctuation is bad. And a lot of times I'll send stuff to her to review before I send it out because I don't want to sound like an idiot. And, and it's time but, consuming to fix. Huh? And it's time consuming to fix, yes. And, and this is nice because it just, boom, it's, you know. Yeah. And, well, and if, if you I, don't like the I answer, things, you, you generate another awkward. one. If I send out stuff in proper English, people will know it's not from me. So yeah. I have to be a little bit careful there. But I thought that well, was... You got to go into this and edit it and make some errors happen. Yeah, that could do that. <laughs> But so getting back on a serious note and talking about this inflation, um, um, Pat, I, I, I've got, and I'm looking at real estate numbers kind of improving a little bit, but it's mostly because the volume is so low that it doesn't take much to move a chart. So yeah. I'm, I'm watching it carefully. I'm not going Yahoo. Here goes the market. Cause I, I don't think it is, but it's hard for me to feel like inflation is getting under control when the spending that's already been passed hasn't even hit the streets yet. That's a good point. We have $2.7 yeah. trillion in appropriations that hasn't even been like the infrastructure bill, the omnibus bill, that's money that's going to come out. So it's highly <clears> possible <throat> in my little feeble mind that inflation will show these great improvements now and the Fed may be in a situation where they can really slow down and back off and then bam, the rest of the spending hits about a year from now. Yeah. I, well, I, I don't, I mean, that the way the government <clears throat> moves, I mean, it might not be for a couple of years before all this infrastructure, <clears throat> you know, hits. So, but I think, you know, you just have to look at the market. The market's going to tell you everything, you know, yeah. it, the market is a summary of all the information out there, supposedly on any given day. So, I mean, with rates, obviously, you know, being so I'm, slowing down you know the rate of volatility um you know barry believes that uh there's some stuff in you know, like in the core shelter numbers he goes that's going to be reported in february march uh, that's gonna, <clears throat> that's coming down even further actually because the uh, the shelter costs believe it or not he said within that number the shelter cost was the highest since 1985 it was the hottest thing he said the hottest increase uh november 20 the 2022 to december of 23rd November, uh, November and December were the hottest prints in 38 years for the shelter costs. And he goes, there's going to be a catch up. It's going to start reversing. So he goes, these, these hot shelter numbers are still in this inflation. He goes, you take that out and inflation actually is cooled down even further. So I, <clears throat> I'm kind of going with the fact that he's, I'm kind of riding Barry's uh, coattails and he said, things are going to um, be even a little bit better here going next couple months. Well, the market's well, always been right more times than the Fed than the central banks. Yeah, he said the Fed, the central, you know, federal banks are just still because there's one Federal Reserve president that said he goes, "We're gonna, we're, we got to catch up," you know. And, and Barry's like, "No, you're, you've been behind the eight ball, transitory inflation, all that." And he's, and he's like, "These guys are still not getting it." So I'm sticking with Barry from what he's saying. Here's oh, yeah. my concern. Um, sorry, Rick. Here's my yeah. concern is that, you know, we're still low in inventory. Um, we're below 19. We're below pre-pandemic. And I think the rates are going to, there's a lot of pent up demand. And I might get some hate email for this, but um, I think those rates get down in the fives. And we're starting to see it already with the market picking up. But 
what happens, you know, we've got the constraint of the low interest rates. So I think our inventory is, unless something happens, we have huge job losses, huge economic downturns. Our inventory is going to stay low. People aren't going to let go of those low rates. Rates come down to the five. There is a ton of pent up demand just sitting on the sidelines waiting for either the crash or the rates. I think people are starting to figure out we might not be crashing. So those rates come down and all of a sudden we're in the position again. This is my concern yeah. that we've got multiple offers and prices going back up. What's that going to do to inflation and just could mess the whole thing up? Well, yeah, I've been could. pulling up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Ruby. I've been showing a lot of new builds lately and um, a lot of the builder incentives have increased so much that they're using that to buy down the interest rates. Um, I've got one going under contract today. That's 4.99% when the builder after part of their incentive buys it down. So, so the builders are having a good year. Not all of them because they're not, not all of them are buying down the rates to that extent, but mm -hmm. the overall, I mean, the, their sales are hanging in there pretty good. And that, that, should be a huge green flag to everybody that says, do we think that real estate sales are going to pick up when interest gets interest rates get down into fives? Yes. Cause it's already happening in the new build communities. Right. 4.99 and people are beating the doors down to get it. I went to one development where we went under contract and you could just see these lines of people waiting to see mm -hmm. the spec homes and That's it's a all lot because of, of 4.99. And uh, right. yeah, so you get down, we already first. know that in August we had brisk sales picked up because mm -hmm. rates went down in July to 5.5 for a brief period of time. People took advantage of it. So we know if that's coming, um, is that really going to help the first time home buyer get out there? No, but you're not the only one sitting on the sidelines waiting to grab something. And that 5.5 or 5.0 is going to, it's going to get a little brisk again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, that's what it seems like. I don't, I don't know. We just keep guessing and we'll be the first ones to let you know right here. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So, Pat, just to rest assured, we're not kicking you off the show. We want, okay. we want you to know that we're going to stay. Now, there's two ways you can take that. One, we're just too kind, or perhaps you're not that handsome. I'm just not that handsome. We would, really miss you. we would really miss you. We're just kind. Well, as I as I tell everybody, you're I'm, handsome. I'm, I've never found a mirror that I didn't fall in love with. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, well, on that note, we're gonna say goodbye to everybody and we'll catch you next week. Thanks, everybody. All right, have a good one. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye -bye. Bye.